This class is going to be concerned with the research process and we'll start by looking at the orientation of the research process. The researcher should be interested in the topic otherwise motivation will be an issue. So right up front at the very start the researcher should be interested in the topic and that's the most basic requirement for successful research. The researcher should be interested in the topic otherwise there will be little motivation to see it through or do it correctly. It's important that the research budget is agreed also and it should be in place before the work commences. Resources should be adequate to enable the research to be completed. So it's also an issue that the research should be financed and there should be an agreed budget and it should be set out well in advance so there is absolute certainty on the part of the researchers and the organization perhaps commissioning the research as to how much the whole activity is going to cost. And a timeline would be useful as well showing the research plan and the sequence of the research effort what what will happen what times what dates a Gantt chart would be good perhaps showing when activities will take place and when the research will be completed. Uh, these should be set out right at the start and these are quite basic requirements for successful research. Now research itself is non-linear that means it doesn't always follow one step on to the next. Sometimes there may be findings which takes the research off onto a sidetrack and there may be several sidetracks in the research. There may be a main theme but there might be sidetracks coming off it. So research is not a linear process. It seldom runs smoothly from start to end and its direction may vary from what was first intended. And that is the fact about research. That is that's a common observation. It's very seldom a linear process moving smoothly from one step to the next in a almost in a straight line from start to finish. It has it deviates and it comes back onto course and it deviates again and and so on. And that is the typical research pattern. Uh, the work is likely to be iterative it's likely that work will be done several times and the the process is undertaken several times and rechecked and over uh, overworked and, and uh, frustrated staff will become annoyed at the amount of iteration and uh, there will be problems in motivating the staff because the same ground has been covered again but perhaps it's necessary to cover the same ground perhaps the first time round uh, showed up issues that were unanticipated and that required the research to be conducted again in the same area. So even though it leads to frustration and annoyance it may be a fact that the research needs to be done in an iterative process and of course that may also have implications for the budget which may cause the budget to overrun somewhat. The work is also likely to be confusing and complicated and the researcher will need good clarity of purpose. Uh, research work is new. There, there's almost by definition nothing before it. There may have been examples of work in the area but the current research will be new. It will be examining relationships that are present day relationships uh, relationships between variables, between let's say price of the product and the quality of the product and the customer's perception of the product or whatever. It's looking at current day situations and that makes it new and means uh, the researcher is dealing with a new situation and the researcher will have to deal with that situation and devise relationships, devise hypotheses that are new. 
So the researcher will have to be dedicated, would have to be motivated and dedicated and have a clear sense of what's required if the research is going to work. Now the methodology, well methodology means the study of method or what method will be used by the researcher. Uh, there should be some idea of the method of data investigation to be used right at the start. The researcher should have some idea if they will use questionnaires or interviews or focus groups or participant observation or just use secondary data and use some advanced statistical processes to look at secondary data. Whatever it is, there should be a clear view at the start as to what methodology will be used. The choice of method and the, the data set to be used should enable the hypothesis to be tested with confidence. So in, in other words, an appropriate research technique should be selected. Not just one that the researcher has an expertise in, but one appropriate to the circumstances that are being researched. One which ideally suits the, one, the, the circumstances that are being researched and which will yield the best insights. Triangulation is a word that's often used in the context of research. Uh, what this means is that a variety of research strategies and methods should be employed to check the results. So don't just rely on a single technique. Use several techniques. Uh, if a questionnaire is going to be used, that's good, perhaps. But also use interviews or use focus groups. And the same sort of outcomes should come from the various techniques used. The focus group should emphasize points that are brought out in the questionnaire. So the same results have been found using different tools, different research tools, using questionnaires, using focus groups, using interviews. The same outcomes. And if the same outcomes are found, it means they are quite reliable. The chances are those outcomes are reliable and the research has found something useful. In other words, triangulation is used to try and give support to a particular technique. It doesn't have to be three, by the way. It's triangulation is the term that's used. Triangulation is uh, a way of finding, finding our place using uh, coordinates. Aeroplanes navigate by triangulation. The sat-navs in cars work by triangulation. They triangulate on three satellites. So three will give you a location. But in fact triangulation in research means if we use a technique particular methodology, use questionnaires for example, if we can also use interviews and find the same results, that's, that's good because the findings of the questionnaires are being supported by the findings of the interviews. That's a form of triangulation. I know there are only two but we call it triangulation. If we've also found uh, questionnaires, focus groups, interviews and participant observation, all gave the same result. We call it triangulation and the results would be even stronger still. For example, surveys may be backed up by interviews and observations. If discordant results from the different approaches, uh, then more work will be required to reconcile the results. Clearly, if the questionnaire suggests something, but the interview suggests something different, there is a problem and more work will be required in order to reconcile those. Now there are two forms of approach in research. One is called induction and this is where we start with data collection. We analyze the data and draw conclusions from the data and out of this it gives us hypotheses and the hypothesis then leads on to a theory. So 
This approach starts with the data and works its way towards a theory. In other words, the theory is being induced from the data. Um, if we observe that when the price of a product is reduced, more of the product is sold. Now that's what the data is suggesting. Now we do an analysis, why is that the case? And we conclude um, people buy more because it's cheaper compared to other products. That may be our conclusion. Now, now we get a hypothesis. If the company reduces its price, more will be sold. Now that's our hypothesis. That's something that could be tested. In fact, we can go to a theory. Every time the price of the product is reduced, more will be sold. So we've moved from making particular observations to a generalized theory. Every time the price of the product is reduced, more of the product will be sold. And we've done that by looking at data, collect the data, analyze the data, develop the hypothesis, and then took the big step and say, well, look, every time the price is reduced, more will be sold. We've induced that theory. The other way to go about it is by deduction. Deduction is, we start with the theory. But where do we get the theory? Well, it may be derived for us in mathematics, or it may be derived in science, or it may be um, someone comes up with an idea and generalizes the idea. So we start off with the theory. The theory is, every time the price of a product is reduced, more of the product is sold. Every time. It's a theory. Now, out of the theory we're going to get a hypothesis. The hypothesis is the price of ball bearings has just been reduced, therefore more ball bearings will be sold. That's our hypothesis. Let's collect some data. We find out how much the price of ball bearings have been reduced. Uh, what's the fall in price? What was the, the pre um, reduction in price sales, how many were sold before the price was reduced, how many were sold after the price was reduced. So we've collected some data and we conclude. We conclude that the theory is good or the theory was not good. We reject the theory. And this is called the deductive approach. It's based on old-fashioned logic developed by Aristotle. So it's Aristotelian logic. Quite simply we have a statement. If A then B. If A happens then B will happen. If the price falls more will be sold. Then we have A. Well the price has just fallen. So if A, if the price falls, then B more will be sold. A. A is the price has fallen. The conclusion is therefore more B. More, more will be sold. Therefore B. More will be sold. And that's called a syllogism. In logic there are many what's known as moods of the syllogism. Uh, this is the, the starting one. Um, it's called a, a universal affirmative syllogism. It's the most common we, we come across, but in fact syllogistic reasoning is very complicated and people who study logic will um, appreciate the complexity of what's known as the moods of the syllogism. But that's what the deductive approach is doing. It's using logic that goes all the way back to Aristotle. Now, let's talk about research approaches. Well, first of all, we have qualitative. This attempts to assess attitudes and the depth of feelings towards some item or event. Qualitative is looking at the attitudes of the customers and the depth of feelings they've got. Do they believe the price is too high, the price is about right, the price is cheap? Do they have strong feelings about the product? Do they like the product or dislike the product? 
We also have quantitative uh, research which deals with numbers. Um, it tries to quantify and measure and analyze relationships between variables. When I talked about cutting the price of the product, that's quantitative because we know what the original price is, we know what the new price is, these are numbers so we can work out the difference in price. It's a, a quantitative calculation. We subtract one from the other. More is sold. Well, we know what the pre-price reduction quantity sold was, and we know what the new quantity sold is after the price reduction, and we can tell the difference. So it's a quantitative research. It's looking at numbers. It may use techniques from what's known as operations research, which is a specialized literature that's developed over the years, looking at particular aspects of business and works out, has worked out the general principles for several aspects of business and includes these in a literature which is called operations research. So libraries may have a small section on operations research and there will be books on operations research. Topics generally covered in there will be um, queuing, the problem of queuing, um, queuing say for production items have to be queued into the production schedules. So queuing is an issue. Uh, there's something called linear programming, integer programming, PERT, stock control. So there are many techniques that have been subjected to quite sophisticated mathematical analysis and general principles have been derived and these are caught up in this literature called uh, operations research sometimes called operational research um, so it's a collection of techniques but the quantitative approach is a measurement approach that may use statistical analysis to to try and work out relationships now interpretism is it sees the truth as subjective. It's trying to interpret the, the situation. Everything must be interpreted and therefore is subjective. So this approach is to try and interpret what is seen. So its methodology is qualitative. It's looking at um, it's trying to interpret the results and trying to figure out what caused the relationships. Let's say the price again. The price falls, more is sold. What caused it? What's the causal relationship? And trying to interpret that relationship. Trying to interpret the, the relationship in the numbers. And in so doing, it's using qualitative analysis. The the next one is um, positivism. This is truth as objective and can be observed and measured. So there is a debate here between the interpretism and the positivism. The the debate is uh, is are artifacts objective? or are they open to interpretation? And it's quite a big debate amongst people in this area. So if it is positivism, then the methodology should be quant um, quantitative. If, it, if the figures represent all of the information, then it's a quantitative analysis. If the figures suggest a relationship and that needs to be interpreted, in the context of perhaps a lot of other um, pieces of information that are, are relevant, then it has to be interpreted and that makes it subjective. So the, the methods of research, well, start with ident identifying um, a sample population and capture some data, recording classify the data, 
and then analyze the data. So there seems to be um, a suggestion in the diagram we've got in front of us on this slide that uh, the process is, is quite straightforward. Identify the sampling population if it's going to be a sample, then capture the data, perform the uh, the data extraction, get, get the data out, record it and classify it, understand the data, and then analyze the data. Now the research process, well, the process is assess current knowledge and understanding. So it's important to understand what we know at the moment. And like, for example, in business, it's important that the managers know the current processes and understand the current processes. Do an extensive literature review. Make sure everyone knows what the past findings of research were and understand what academics are saying about the particular topic, be it in business or elsewhere. See what theories have been suggested, what theories have been rejected, what theories are currently in fashion and currently deemed to be applicable and useful. So understand the literature. Determine hypotheses or hypotheses, ES, if there's more than one. So determine the hypothesis. Uh, uh, the hypothesis is if, if the company cuts the price, more will be sold. That could be the hypothesis. Or the hypothesis is if the workers are paid more, they'll be motivated more highly. It's a hypothesis. Now, determine the methodology to be used to test the hypothesis. How will this hypothesis be tested? How, how will data be collected to test this? The hypothesis is a testable statement. Now the, the data may be uh, extracted by sample or it may be extracted, um, it, it may be looking at the whole population, in which case it's called a census. If it's extracted by, uh, if it's extracted from the population as a sample, how will the sample be selected? And what's the size of the sample? And how representative will the sample be of the population? Once the, the sample has been selected and, and drawn, collate and analyze the results and draw conclusions about the hypothesis. So once the data has been found, analyze it. Analyze it and compare it to the hypothesis. Does the data support the hypothesis or reject the hypothesis? The process is not linear. There will be many revisions and reworkings until the true and accurate outcome is determined. So it's, it's not a straightforward process, but it is the process that needs to be followed. Having got the hypothesis, data is required, the data is collected according to some methodology, and then it's processed and analysed and the results are compared to the hypothesis. And the hypothesis is then accepted or rejected according to the findings. So if we look at this schematically, we have the aims of the research process. And the aims give us a literature. And the literature is past research in the area, what was, uh, what's been found in the, in the past, what academics and um, experts consider to be good practice or the way to uh, organize or uh, structure something. So the literature tells us what the past research is and we have ideas and theories that are current and that are perhaps being taught as good management practice at the moment. And this literature suggests a methodology because past research was conducted and 
various methodologies were tried out and perhaps some were shown to be totally inappropriate or wrong or leading to misleading results or whatever. So the literature generally suggests a methodology. And having got the methodology and collected the data using this methodology, it's analysed. The data is analysed and it's analysed uh, according to the methodology and it's analysed in the context of the literature and the hypothesis that has been derived from the literature as well. And out of the analysis we get the conclusions. Now of course having got the conclusions this process doesn't stop there. It really feeds back into refining the aims and going back round the circle again to try and further improve. Because the research activity doesn't just happen and stop. The research activity is a constant quest for improvements and for insights into situations. In business, uh, having conducted research, let's say, into the uh, the stores, uh, the scheduling of production, the production techniques, having conducted research into this and got to the end and made some recommendations and drawn conclusions and so on, the process could start again because it's a never-ending search for improvement. So these are some of the issues that are involved in the research approach. Now this video and this, this talk links to other classes in the this module, uh, other videos, and it's important that you go back over those, make notes and add what we've done here, because this is a, a different perspective again, add this to the previous set of notes that you've you've worked out from the other videos. And this will give you a much more comprehensive view of the overall research process. But that's all I'm going to do in this session. I'm going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.